Welcome everyone to Breaking Bedrock. My name is Fiasco. Thank you for joining me for episode six. I can't believe it's already been six episodes. It feels like just yesterday we were babies starting out in a, a place several thousand blocks that direction. As you can see, I have been pretty busy on the old starter base here. I say starter base, we really had our starter base down there, but this is the metaphorical starter base. Uh, you can see my sheep are here and well behaved after our trip up the hill. And up here, I have started on something that has been actually probably my most effective farm so far. This is my automatic wool farm. Uh, how it works is these little guys, which took great pain to get inside these boxes, uh, they eat this grass when they're hungry. Maybe we'll get to see this guy do it. They don't do it immediately like they used to, but when he's hungry and he wants to replenish his wool, he's going to eat this grass. That is going to fire off a observer that's behind it. That hits that redstone dust and then fires off this uh, dispenser, which has shears in it. He gets sheared automatically. The wool falls through there because of our hopper minecart below. Uh, the hopper minecart picks it up unloads it into some hoppers there and we get a ton of wool and uh, now I don't really know what happened but the first night I built this I just put eight sheep in I'm gonna have another set above them I would like to have 16 but I had them all in here and I woke up in the morning and only three were left and in my chest was a bunch of mutton some of it was cooked and some of it wasn't so I have a sneaking suspicion that a lightning storm ravaged my sheep because I didn't have these glass blocks above their heads at the time. I had trap doors above their heads and I don't think that the trap door was enough maybe to stop lightning because we are very high up here. These would be the highest up living creatures on this whole island. So I don't really know how lightning mechanics work in this game, but it wouldn't be that surprising if they got struck by lightning through the trap doors during a, a thunderstorm. So anyways, I had to go and dip into our reserve sheep and get another five of them and replace them. And then I dyed all of them black because I have an upcoming project that I would like to use a lot of black wool for. And this thing is great. This is a very efficient farm. I left it overnight and I got probably... Uh, two-thirds of a full double chest of white wool so a couple nights of AFKing here and it would really give you all the wool you need I would like to have 16 of these eventually I want another rack on top so that I can have one of each color and then just have it collecting colored wool in the background while we work in here update on our sugarcane farm this thing sucks this is just not an effective farm. I miss zero ticking so much because in that double chest, this has been running probably for at least 20 hours with me in the area with it loaded. And there probably isn't even two rows of that double chest in, in, in filled in with sugarcane. It's just not great. Um, which is why this design isn't super common is because it's very expensive and it's super slow, but it does work. It's, it's reliable. It's just not the best. And you can see our water streams down here incorporate packed ice as well. That's just so that the items can flow a little bit easier across them. Now this bad boy right here is our cactus farm and it is wonderful. Uh, it also can be double stacked. I just haven't really had the desire to do that. Um, also, sometimes when you double stack cactus, it'll fall off the top and into one of the other cacti and destroy itself, which is just a thing with cactus farms. So I like to keep them one high if I can. And it's been it's been doing really good. This chest has probably got as much or more than the sugar cane. Oh, and a bunch was just harvested, neat. This thing makes cactus faster than that thing makes sugar cane, which is crazy to me, but I'm glad I've got it because this is basically the only source of green dye in the game. Uh, you need cactus for that, and I like green dye. In fact, when I get some white dye, we are going to dye this glass and this glass. I could dye this glass now because I'm gonna make it green, but we'll just wait until we have the white dye and do it all at once. And then this, I don't know if I'm going to dye this. Maybe I'll use the colored glass for each color of the sheep that produces. Yeah, that sounds cool. Let's do that. Uh, in the meantime, though, I have moved my nether portal up to here. 
And what I would like to do is connect another portal to that village over there because I think that we need to be connected to the mainland. Now we've still got our portal in the nether that connects us to our farm over there, but I have a little guy over there waiting and I would like to try and bring him through the nether and I'll show you what I mean later on when we collect him. Also, you might notice that I have replaced the note blocks here with dark oak. I think that this is just better. It was too much um, horizontal design before with like this really, really nice pattern gets washed out when there's just these blocks so i think less is more in that situation and i like how that turned out don't worry about the grass that's just a, a placeholder right now i still need to do like these arches and stuff on the inside Whoa. so shh. so i just left those as placeholders right now the inside of these walls will be redesigned same with this floor and this ceiling here it's not just going to be stone bricks don't worry about that there will be actual designs but i don't really know what this space is actually going to hold besides my storage system in the middle. So I've just been kind of waiting to see. I want to get my farms going first because if our farms are built, then all the work I do here will have us collecting supplies as well, which is great. So I'm going to finish up this farm, I think, first. And then I don't know what I'm going to do. I guess probably make another farm. I guess I should... I'm going to need more stone and glass, to be honest with you. I got to I gotta do a little bit of collecting. But I would like to get this upstairs farm area buttoned up. I think that that would be just a really great milestone. And then once that's running at full capacity, we can design down here and make this look pretty. And then set out a st uh, space for our storage area. Because above our storage area, we are going to put our iron farm. I still want to do an iron farm. I still think it's possible even with all this other stuff around. I just, I, I just, I couldn't put it on this ground floor. It wouldn't work with our storage system the way that we want it. So storage system will probably have to go in first, even though I don't know where I'll get the iron for the hoppers, but we'll see, baby steps. For now, I'm gonna check off a few more easy farms up here and probably finish this whole ceiling. So it'll be very dark down here. We'll have to add some lighting. Uh, and then the second floor up there, uh, full of glass, I'm going to need way more sand. So I'm going to get cracking on that. And this, if you're wondering, is just my coward's corner. This is my AFK shack where I spend the nights uh, so that my stuff can grow. So let's get cracking on some floors. And there we have it. Our floors are complete. I'll put in this in the center here. I'll go over in a minute, but that's not permanent. That's just for ease of access right now. So we finished our sheep farm, and I'm pretty sure what killed my sheep earlier was lightning because I left this overnight. I left the first layer overnight with glass and then the second layer with glass and... Uh, no sheep have mysteriously vanished or wound up as cooked mutton. So that's, that's great. I think that solved the problem. So yeah, no trap doors over top of your sheep if you're making something like that for yourself. And this thing actually has, okay, that was anticlimactic. I emptied all of the wool. It has been producing wool like crazy. Um, anything else we did up here? No, that's basically it. Oh, I also, uh, rearranged down here a little bit to make it a little, um... A little better, a little more feng shui down here. Uh, now we've got the bubble column going upstairs, and just our storage is just set on two different sides now, with these item frames uh, telling me what's inside of each one. And that, until I'm used to the storage system, and because it's moved around so much, is a huge, huge help. So the wool is right here, and right here, and right here. It is just cranking the wool out. Um, I think I've actually got more than enough white wool right now for a long time and probably more than enough black wool right now because the project I was going to use the black wool for, I believe has changed now. So I don't even know if I need that much, but if we want to, we can always dye the white wool down the line and then it's not, it's not a bad thing to have a lot of one thing. So, so I do want to continue our work on the farms upstairs. I think that that will be a great thing to focus on for this episode, but there is a problem. I don't have any bones because there are no mobs on this island and I haven't been slaying skeletons like I normally would be. And I haven't set up a mob farm because I thought I wanted to make one that was gonna look like a hot air balloon and I still might do that in the future. 
but I don't really want to make something right now that I think I'm going to tear down. So I have done a little bit of sleuthing around because I, I don't need rotten flesh. So your big mob drops are bones, rotten flesh, string, spider eyes, and gunpowder. I would love some gunpowder, but I don't need it yet because I'm not flying yet. That's, and I don't need TNT right now either. I don't need rotten flesh because I have a farm that makes a ton of it. Um, I don't really need spider eyes because I only really use those for potions to cure villagers and they're actually pretty easy to get on their own. String I could use some because uh, dispensers require bows and bows require string. So that's one of those things where you don't really think that you need it until you do. But bones are the big thing. I want to make a micro crop farm up there to farm carrots and it, I, it, it's pointless. I can't do it unless I have... Uh, unless I have bone meal. So I have done a little bit of investigating, a little bit of sleuthing around, and I think that I have found something that might solve our problems without me needing to make a big, ugly mob farm right now. So I'm gonna do a little exploring actually now in-game and see if we can find that. are one spawner and two spawners one's a skeleton one's a spider problem solved now all that's left to do is all of the work in order to make these into a farm and i don't think that i'm going to turn this into a farm that requires a trident killer i think i'm just going to make it a farm where the mobs fall into somewhere they get killed by uh magma blocks and that's it they just they just do the drops i'm not too worried about the experience that i'm going to get from it or using the looting effect so we're not going to go with the trident killer at least i don't think so um this setup here first of all is a gold mine i'm super 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 lucky to have this and so close to my base it was yeah a, a very very convenient distance away um, so yeah, now all I gotta do is figure out an AFK spot, dig out all around here, and then get some killing mechanisms going. So, oh boy, projects, am I right? A guy just wants some bones. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so this is what we came up with, and I apologize, it is a little dark. I actually, uh, I might be able to light it up a little. Um, so as you can see, we just dug out all around that one up there. I actually didn't look up the dimensions of how much space I needed around these things. It seems like it's pretty tight. I probably didn't need to go this big with it, but I'd rather be safe than sorry in this situation. So yeah, the spiders fall from way up there. They fall down. Um, I'm pretty sure they die if they hit that, uh, slab there, actually. Uh, slabs on top of the spawners so that nothing can spawn on top of them, uh, and then just a water stream down there leading to some magma cubes, and then another water stream which leads to this bubble elevator, and we can actually see some of the drops just coming up there a second ago. Uh, yeah, they just come into these chests, which currently hold all of my, uh, construction supplies, so... Uh, I'm gonna have to clear that out, but yeah, as you can see, this has only been running for a few minutes, and already we're getting lots of goodies, lots of bones and lots of string, which is what I wanted, and I wasn't really sure with this hopper configuration if it would go to the bottom or the top, but it actually seems to just be going in whatever one of these chests it wants, which is fine with me, um... Because of the bows, this will probably actually fill up really quickly, but that's okay, this is more just for, like, if I'm doing something or if I want to watch a movie, I'll come and stand here for a little while and uh, AFK. Now, the only thing, I don't know, because I'm a perfectionist, I kind of want to get these ladders out of here. Um, I can definitely get this one out, but that one, oh boy, okay, woo! All right, no, get down. I am going to put glass here. Uh, they might have just seen me. Uh, I just left that open so that I could go away. Uh, so that I could show you this, but that backfired. Okay. 
Uh, also, I'm gonna make this pretty in the next few minutes, and yeah, this actually didn't take as long as I thought it would. Um, I'm gonna bust this out so we can get a little better view from up here. I kind of thought we'd have a little AFK platform up here where we can maybe just see what's going on down there. Um, but yeah, so I'd say this probably took me like an hour and a half total, which for how much mining I had to do actually wasn't that bad. I did burn through one of my pickaxes though pretty good, my silk touch one. I'm gonna have to re- re- uh, oh, never mind, that guy doesn't die if he falls on there. That's a bummer. Oh well, yeah, they just pathfind off of there, no problem. So this should solve our bones and string crisis pretty handily. We're gonna get lots of arrows as well, which I will keep. Um, you never know when they'll come in handy until they get to be too much. Obviously, then I'll just start trashing them. Uh, and if we decide we want to stay here for long periods of time, I'll install a proper filter system and we'll get some of that junk filtered out. But in the meantime, it seems to be working Pretty good, actually. These spawners are just a blessing. They always, always, always work really good. And, you know, I might actually block this up because that light in there, I don't I don't think it's affecting it, but it might be reducing the rates ever so slightly. So maybe I'll put black glass. Does that affect light levels? I don't know. Anyways, let's make this AFK room a little bit prettier with what supplies I do have here, and then we will work on our next project. All right, and this is what I came up with. So here, whoa, ruin my video, why don't you, dude? Rude. Here there was an abandoned nether portal or a ruined portal, which is perfect because I'm actually going to fix this and make this the nether portal connection to this farm. Look at me go. And then we have a staircase with the nether kind of bleeding into it. I kept that because I thought it looked kind of neat. The rest of it's pretty plain up until the bottom here. I didn't really want to burn a whole lot of resources or time on this. But then down here, we've just got this nice little waiting room that I used some of our new white wool for, leaving some garbage to despawn there. And yeah, my inventory is chocked full and my ender chest. So I have to go and drop all this stuff off so that I can come back and grab the rest of this junk. But yeah, so we've got a, a fully AFKable string and bone farm right now, which is perfect. That it saves me from having to make that big old mob farm, which I really didn't want to do. So let's head back to the base. I'm gonna do a few trips here and maybe we'll see if we can get this nether portal linked up and see if we can get a, uh, a little nether hub going. Okay, didn't have my mic ready because I wasn't expecting to have to uh, record any voice right now. And that is why you always keep a potion of fire resistance on you when you're in the nether. That probably was not super smart of me. I got a little confident. I didn't think that those guys would be able to knock me off so quickly there. So, no, we are all good. I'm going to stay away from him, though, because those guys really hurt. Uh, where's my staircase? Oh, I really need to invest in some nether infrastructure. Leave me alone. All right, we are good. As long as the gas doesn't blow up this flimsy, flimsy bridge I've built. Okay. Uh, let's go get another potion of fire resistance. Okay, now that our new farm is fully connected via the nether, granted it is an extremely dangerous route, uh, that'll have to do for now though. I mean, it is still way quicker than going through the overworld. And, you know, as long as no zombie piglins uh, knock us into the nether, or regular piglins, or ghasts, or who knows, maybe the striders will get frisky. I, 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 who know, it's always an adventure when you're in the nether. But if you bring a fire resistance potion with you, then you're, you're good to go usually. Anyways, after our little detour in the nether there, we are back at our bone and string farm. And it has been doing very, very well. You can see we get tons of string, tons of arrows. We actually don't get any bows and very, very few spider eyes. And I think that's because maybe those only drop if a player has killed the creature, uh, which 
I'm not cheesed about at all. If there's no bows clogging up the inventory, that just means that there's another full stack of something that I do want in its place. Now the string will pile up pretty quick, but good news is it can be compacted by turning it to wool, so it's not a big deal. But the bones, so this is after a one overnight AFK session. I went to bed at probably, I don't know, 10 o'clock, woke up around seven, and this is how many bones we got. So times this by three, is that how that works? Or two, I can't remember. It, it's a weird conversion because one stack of bones makes three stacks of bone meal and then nine stacks of bone meal make one stack of bone blocks. It's confusing, but this is enough bone meal to see us through quite a few farms. And if I know it's as simple as just going to sleep and waking up the next day and collecting the bones, this thing is going to serve us very well. Now, I am going to have to transport these uh, in multiple trips because unfortunately I don't have any shulker boxes yet. But that is hopefully something that we can change in the near future. In the meantime, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to go back. I'm going to fill up my inventory as best I can. And then we're just going to leave this place until I need to uh, come back here for more. Also, I blocked up this window. I feel like the spiders might have been glitching into it when they were climbing the wall and they were staying up here. So I just, I just blocked it off. I might put some trim around there later, but it's fine for now. Um, so yeah. I think that that's going to do it for today's episode. I know we didn't get all of the farms done that we wanted to, but honestly, this was a big project on its own, and this episode is getting long, so I'm going to have to cut it off. We will do more work around the base next episode, and who knows, maybe go on a little adventure and try and find some new biomes. Until next time, my name is Fiasco. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you in the next one.